This is the story of New Jersey's fallen beach town. Welcome to Atlantic City. There was a time when the New Jersey shore had a resort town so elite that it was sought after by presidents and celebrities alike. People flocked to the coastline in search of high-class hotels and a picturesque experience, often so accommodating that the activities available were not even bound by the laws. Nowadays, the city has been relegated to a mere shadow of its former self, hidden under the skyline's looming urban decay. It begins as many American modern landmarks do, with the Native Americans who inhabited the island on which it was built. As prior to the arrival of the first European settlers, Absecon Island was far from empty. Before 1783, it was occupied by a tribe of indigenous Algonquin-speaking people called the Leni Lenape, meaning the original people, a collective which still survives today as the root and ancient ancestor of many other American Indian nations. The name Absecon Island derived from its original Indian name, Absegami, meaning little water. Apse being the common Algonquin word for small or little, and gami meaning across, suggesting that there was such a small amount of water in the bay that you could see clear across it to the other side. Historically, the Leni Lenape had been led by matrilineal clans. The children are born into the clans of their mothers, and initially, agricultural land was also managed by the women of the clan. Hereditary leadership passed through the mother's side, with elder women in the clan being able to disapprove of and remove leaders. These families were typically matrilical, with newlyweds living with the bride side of the family to receive aid from the women in her family. Though they were the original inhabitants of Absecon Island, they were not confined solely to one area. They would come and go with the seasons, making their way over to the island from the mainland during the summer months to hunt and fish in the island's abundant variety of natural resources. The first contact with Europeans is thought to have occurred in 1524, when the Italian explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano was greeted by local Lenape in canoes as his ship entered what is now known as the Lower New York Bay. Through the early 17th century, the Lenape and Dutch would primarily interact for the purpose of trading the beaver pelts that the local Lenape would trap in exchange for European-made goods such as metal tools that they used to plant and harvest the maize, squash, and bean vines that were planted in the early spring months. In the early days, Absecon Island was largely passed over and ignored by incoming colonial settlers because it was difficult to reach. It was only accessible by boat which made it more difficult to transport materials needed to construct homes. But this all changed in 1678. Thomas Budd, a Quaker from England, arrived in what would later be known as Atlantic County. You see, Budd was given the island, along with other acres, as a settlement of a claim against the holders of the royal grant. These acres of mainland property were valued at approximately 40 cents an acre, with beach land being worth four cents an acre. For the next century, the island would continue to see traffic from the Native Americans, but they were now joined by early mainland settlers, hunters, and fishermen. Despite Bud now owning the rights to the island, however, it wasn't until a little over a century later when the first permanent settlement was built in 1783. Furthermore, it wasn't built by Bud, but by a settler named Jeremiah Leed, who had been born 29 years earlier in Leeds Point in 1754. According to the official Atlantic City website, after building a cedar log cabin, Leed and his family would become the first official residents of what would later be known as Atlantic City, growing corn and rye as well as raising cattle on their family home and plantation. Mr. Leeds lived on the plantation until his death and burial in 1838, in a grave that is now a small traffic circle called Oxford Circle in Northfield, New Jersey. After his passing, widowed Millicent Leeds obtained a license to operate a tavern called Aunt Millie's Boarding House on Baltic and Massachusetts Avenue. This was the very first business in Atlantic City. Furthermore, the Leeds children were an integral part to the development of the city. Chalky S. Leeds, born in 1824, became the city's first mayor in 1854 by the age of 30. 
Likewise, Robert B. Lead, born four years after his brother in 1828, went on to become the city's first postmaster, and by 1850, there were now several permanent dwellings on the island, six of which were owned by Lead's descendants, with the seventh belonging to a renowned physician, Dr. Jonathan Pitney, who would later become known as the father of Atlantic City. While well, Dr. Pitney saw great potential in Epsican Island and had plans to turn it into a health resort for those retreating from the city, there still remained the major issue of finding a way to grant more people access to the island. To remedy this eternal problem, alongside Richard Osborne, a trusted friend of his and a civil engineer from Philadelphia, Dr. Pitney created plans to bring a railroad to the island for ease of travel, and in just two years, the Camden Atlantic City Railroad was brought to life. The very first train carrying tourists arrived after a two and a half hour long trip on July the 5th, 1854. In that same year, Atlantic City was officially recognized as a city of New Jersey. Just one year prior, the first commercial hotel was built on Massachusetts and Atlantic Avenue and would operate until its eventual closure in 1902. Osborne is widely acclaimed as the person who came up with the name Atlantic City, while Dr. Pitney is more often credited with naming the city's streets. By then, word about the bustling city had spread far and wide, and as a result, a new seaport was created which saw rapid growth. This incredible amount of seafaring traffic, however, also meant that tragic shipwrecks were imminent. Oh. 